present Austin work. <clears throat> Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Are you happy? Yes. In the service of the King. You know when we sing, sometimes my wife is telling me, smile. <laughs> As you know, I'm not smiling. Well, so I agree with that. But sometimes, you know, when you are not happy, if someone tells you, smile, you feel uncomfortable. That, that joy, that happiness must come from the heart. Amen. So when we say, I am happy in the service of the king, means I must understand what is the Lord's service. And I must be willing to do that work. Then I can be happy, right? <laughs> so may God help us today as we consider work together. You know, work together is not easy, I tell you. And work together is joyous. Do you have experience someone, you know, you work with somebody who knows nothing about work? Can you say, I'm happy to do this? You know, Sister White mentioned sometimes it's better to do by yourself than teaching your children to do. Because it is so hard to teach. It takes so long time, but eventually you will have joy working together. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, this is our key text for today. We know that all things work together for bad, for good. Since God is the ruler, and sustainer of the universe. Everything created works together for good to those who love Him and those who are called according to His purpose. Even all the elements of nature work together for those who love you know, in, in Psalms 19, heaven declare what? The glory of God. And if you read that the verse from 1 to 6, heaven, firmament, sun, stars, they all work together for what? For good. Good of who? To love God. Those who are called for His purpose. Now, you know, sometimes we think that not all things work together for good. Do you really believe that all things work together for good? Amen. You know, in, in Romans chapter 8, work together for good, all things. It didn't say 99, but all. Sometimes we it's hard for us to believe. We think almost, yes, almost, but not all. But if you're reading this verse in Genesis chapter 50, what was, what was this verse about? You know, after the father Jacob died, the brothers of Joseph, they remembered they remembered what? About what they have done. Done to J uh, jo Joseph. And they, they were afraid because they were thinking while father was alive, Joseph loved his father, so he is listening. He's listening to his father. But now the father died. Who knows? He is a prime minister of Egypt. He may revenge us. That was the worry of his brethren. So they could not come to Joseph directly. They were sending somebody to go and tell who? To tell Joseph. And this is what they said. 
What did they say here? And if you read the next verse, when Joseph heard this, he wept. You know why? Because they misunderstood. They did not understand his brother. Who were they? You know? Where were they? How Joseph helped them? How Joseph forgave them? How Joseph provide all their need in the land of Egypt? The best, best land in Egypt, right? The best land and best circumstance for them to live was provided by whom? Joseph. Joseph forgave them. Now still they cannot believe. Joseph, because his father, their father died, they he may revenge them. But the point here, what Joseph said, what did he say here? You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto what? Even selling Joseph, my brethren, turned into a blessing. God sent, according to Psalm 104, God sent Joseph before him, his people, prepared place for them. God knows what is best. God knows what is good for his people, those who love him. And this is why when we continue to read Romans chapter 8, even tribulation, even persecution, even death, whatever, still work for good. For those who love Jesus, love God, and those who are called by, with His purposes. Now, in, when we consider that everything what God provided worked together for good of us, then we may have tendency to think that, oh, maybe we can, I can wait, and then any, anyhow, the God does everything good. But if we read this verse in Philippians chapter 2, God wants us to be active, not only passive. You know, sometimes, what's a passive here? It doesn't matter whether I do or not. God will do good. Everything good. Everything I'm creating on this earth is doing good for His people. So I'm doing nothing but it will be good. Anyhow, the good will come. But the Bible says, the work out your own salvation in means is not passive, it's active. He wants us to do something. The work of gaining salvation is what? Is a work of cooperation between God and His people. The best way to save ourselves in cold weather is to save others who are dying. Right? Do you agree with that? The best way in cold climate, how cold do you, ex do you have experience? Freezing cold. Freezing cold. How, how, how uh, the what? Celsius, right? Usually not Fahrenheit there. Well, how cold is cold? <laughs> For me, I have personally, uh, I have experienced uh, 33 Celsius. I can tell you it was cold. The minus, minus, minus 33. It was in Mongolia. And, and the people there, they have the, the head and they just open four eyes only. They have to they have full covering. But I know there are, there are countries, there are places even colder than that. But what is the best way to save yourself in that climate, in that, that weather? Is to help those who are dying because of that cold. Work out your own salvation. How? How? as we helping others. 
who need salvation. Man is given privilege of working with God in which way? In which way? In the saving of his own souls. How? Again, as we help those who are dying, <laughs> when we try to help them, that is the best help for whom? For my salvation. Active working for my salvation is helping what? Helping others. And in this sense, God wants us to work together. <clears throat> Does God need our help? What do you think? Does he need our help? He's, he's good. He's, he's almighty. But he's almighty in 99%. So he needs our 1% help. Does he? Yeah. Yes. No. Yeah. Well, then we will have doctrinal issue here. God can do anything. All things. But he wants, man is given what? A privilege. God gave us privilege of working with God in the saving of other souls Amen. or own souls. <laughs> now we will see Bible examples from 2 Kings chapter 5. How many of you remember 2 King chapter 5? Okay, this is a time to open your Bible. If you don't know, do not try to guess. This is the whole purpose. Come to church, bring your Bible. Do not depend on the PowerPoint. Sometimes if there's no electricity. If there's no bad connection, then you will have nothing. We need. So in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 19, we have a experience of a little girl. We have experience of a little girl who began from among human beings, began the good works. Very Beginning, the very foundation of missionary work. But we know that was not the very beginning. There was something behind which we cannot see. This is why it was a privilege of working together with God for the saving of souls. In His providence, God made all things work together for good to them that love God. That's, there is no question about it. Same time, all those who, are, those who love Him will work together for good for those who are looking for God. Hoping for healing some people, restoration, hope for hoping salvation from sin, seeking for eternal life, they are the object that God wants us to work together with Him. The saved one will work for the saving of now in this chapter, if we go to verse 1, we have a one name. What is the name, Ethan? What is the name coming out from this verse 1? Hmm? Naaman. Naaman. Philip, who was, who was this Naaman? He was a general. He was a general. That's great. How many stars? Plenty. Plenty? How many stars? But by the way, what was his problem? He was a leper. He was a leper, right? He had a lepr leprosy. You know what leprosy is? How serious? How serious this, this is? You know, in the Bible, in the Bible, we know that those who have this symptom of leprosy, how, what are they called to do? They were both going around the city, and shouting what? 
unclean. The Bible doesn't say they have to go quietly. They have to go around the city and say, unclean. Why? So that people can know. And then after they tell everybody they're unclean, then what they do? They go. Seclude themselves. But this man, Naaman, was just like Cyrus, used by God. Who remembers Cyrus? Who remembers Cyrus? Do you remember Cyrus? The one of the king, right? The first king of Mede and Persia United Kingdom. And what, what did he do? We know that he. Because of him, you know, we understand because of him, the work of God progressed. Okay? He, before his birth, 100 years before his birth, God prophesied about his, even his name. Can you imagine? But this name was used by God. And if you read in Luke chapter 4, 27, God, Jesus himself mentioned about him, name. He said, in Israel there were so many lepers, but the, the, in the time of uh, uh, Elisha, but only the Naaman, the Syrian, was heard by God. Many others in Israel, they were not. But the Syrian, the Naaman, he was heard. So this man, who do we consider this man? Now, if you read in verse 2, we have a what? We have a little maid. How, what a contrast between great man and little maid. <coughs> little maid. Children, which is better, little maid or great man? Hmm? Great man, right? The name and was the four star or five star, he was great man. And we have contrary in verse 2, little maid. But what was this little maid? Who was she? Who was she? She was a shepherd. As we know that she was a maid, right? She was another daughter there. And, and what else? Prisoner of Judah. The prisoner of Judah. So was she said? Was she gloomy? You know, the Bible doesn't say, but I assume that she was saying, I am happy in the service what? Of the king. Of the king. And chance came to her. So what did she tell? What did she tell? I know a doctor. About? About the servants of God in Israel. Right? And she was telling, but she was not telling to di uh, directly to Naaman. She didn't have the privilege to go to Naaman directly. So she was helping his wife, and she was telling about the Elisha. And why did she tell about it? Why? What do you think? She had a love for what? She had a love for her master. Love for master. Or she had a love for souls. She wanted to see the restoration. She wanted to see healing. Can you imagine? Little girl, little maid can have this desire. What about older one? If little one can have that desire, what about older one? And, and she was, she couldn't do anything, right? She was a captive. So all she could do was what? To talk about the prophet in Israel. She had a burden for souls. And in verse 3, what did she say? Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in his son. That was the only word, according to the scripture. Then he would be here. She was ready to speak for whom? Speak for God. She was 
she was loving, she was kind, and she was very considerate. You know, she was taken captive. She, could, she might say, well, who cares? If you die, then we will have another general. Is it true? In the country, if one general dies, we can have another general, right? Why, why is she should she consider for him? It means she was very considerate. She was very kind. She desired the happiness, well-being of others. Now, and then, we have here difficulty. So, the, the, the story make a short. This girl said, uh, the maid told the wife of Naaman, and the wife told the Naaman, and Naaman told the king, and king sent, wrote a letter to whom? The king of Israel, because this was not within the country, this was the between different countries. And then, when king of Israel received the letter from, Naam, uh, from the king of Syria, what was his reaction in verse 7? What was his reaction? What did he say? What did he say here in verse 7? Am I going? <laughs> Would you be saying the same thing if you were in his position? What, what was he supposed to say then? He's supposed to know about that girl, but he didn't. Well, yeah, if he didn't know anything, anything the girl about girl, but what he's supposed to be, what was the letter about? He was sending, he was sending letter that they need help. He need help of all his servants. Then, if he was a properly thinking or reasonable, he could refer to whom? The prophet. But instead of referring, what did he say? Am I God? He took completely different attitude than the little man. Completely different. You know? We know that all things work what? Work together. For good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now he himself considered not he was not in the plan of God. He didn't know. He didn't believe. He was thinking only about what? About himself. He was very negative thinker. You know? Who are, who are these negative? When, when can we be negative? Negative means selfish. Just like him. Am I God? You know? Sometimes this happens when we make a decision, even in the church. We must be very careful. He was a king of Israel. He's supposed to be willing, happy to receive this letter. If he had a faith in God. Now, then he comes in verse 8, the Elijah, the man of God. And what, when he heard, when Elijah heard the reaction of king, what did he say? What did he say? What, what did he say? Look, what are you doing? What are you doing? Send him to me. Well, according to scripture, he was the man of God. He was the man of God. He understood what was, what was God's plan for him and for, for Naaman. Why not send a letter to king of Israel? King of Israel was in a position that he could do great work for God. He, that was the, his opportunity, maybe one 
only once in life opportunity to represent God. Speak about God. But he, he lost. He missed. And Elisha, this man of God, was asking him to send him. Why, he said, why you have rent your cloth? What, what, why? And uh, then we know that this man came finally, the Naaman came. We know the story. So the, the Elisha went out, he greeted him, right? Elisha went out and greeted this Naaman because he was a great man. What did he do? He just sent the servant. And to tell <laughs> what to do. Well, he was very practical. No need any flowery words here. Amen. He came here to what? To be healed. And God was giving him what he was needed. But here the problem comes. When, when Naaman heard the word of Elijah through servants, was he happy? No. no. Why not? Because well, not from the prophet, right? From the prophet. Oh, oh, what, what was the problem here? He wanted to come out to the town. That's right. <laughs> what was the problem here? You know the point here. Why? And he even get angry. He was wrong, mm -hmm. the Bible says. You know, he should be happy. Because the prophet said, you go, and then you will, be, you will be healed. And he should be very happy. But instead he was angry. Why? Why? You know, what was the key words that made him angry? What was the key words that he was about to return? You know why? He said, I thought. I thought. You know, sometimes this I thought prevent the work together. Everything work together for what? For good. But oftentimes what I thought is different. And then this name was on for me. God made it very clear in Isaiah. My thought is what? My thoughts are not your thoughts. But when we read the Bible verse, when we have Christian life for a long time, oftentimes we think that my thought is God's thought. Yes. No one say that, but in, in, in many ways, it appears in that way. My thought is God's thought, while the Bible says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. And this is, this is a whole problem, you know. This has been always a problem. I thought, I think, my understanding, I want, I don't like, I like. In the work of God, if anything of this, any of this is involved, then it ruins the work of God. God cannot work miracle here if, if everything was done according to what I thought. He was expecting that God should work according to his think. Although he was in a miserable condition, leper who need to be healed. That moment when he said, I thought, he forgot that he was a leper. And this is a tendency of human nature. Now, so finally, you know, what, he must be very thankful. He must, uh, he must promote 
his twelve bands. Why he, he went to Jordan? According to that chapter, his servants were persuading him, right? Why you are here? Why you go back? If the prophet of God asked you some greater thing, wouldn't you do it? You came here to do it. Why you just want to go away? So he was convinced. So he went to the Jordan. The Bible says how many times he did? Seven. seven. Why seven? Perfection. Okay, what well, perfection? That's correct. But why seven? The prophet says so. You know what? Change the eye. Change I thought. Change my my understanding. What I want. What I like. To remove this. How many times? <coughs> Seven times. Unless this I thought is completely removed, God cannot work. God cannot work. Everything worked together for what? Yes. When I put myself, my thought there is not for good. God knows. Sometimes we recognize if I do everything what I want, it won't be good. <clears throat> It won't be good. Faith of Naaman was being tested. While pride struggled for what? He was thinking, he was still thinking he was a general. He forgot that he was a leper. <laughs> How often? We repeat his experience. How often we forget that we are sinner. We know that leprosy represents what? Sin. Yes. That's why it was called in the Levitical, it was called curse of God. Yes. We have to remember this. When we remember this, Whatever comes, whatever God provides for my salvation, I must be very thankful. I must be very thankful. Whatever God used, what me, whatever the means God used, I must be very thankful. When he healed it, it means how many times? Seven times. When he dipped himself seven times, what was the reason? What was the reason? Yeah. Nothing to surprise because it was so, it was said from the beginning. It was the beginning. You know, sometimes we experience that way, right? We we do not believe what God said, but and then finally after struggle we do. Oh, I know it's the truth. Yeah, it was the truth from the beginning. God's word is the truth. <coughs> Well, we, we all struggle. We have better with this, are we? And we have a lesson. To work together for good. Work together with God. Work together with other people, other souls, other members of the church. God wants us to work together for good. We know that all things work together for good. Now, can we say that about King of Israel? But can we say that King of Israel say, say this Romans 8.20, all things work together for good. Could King of Israel say this? What do you think? What, what, how did he react? When, when opportunity came for him to do his part. What about the Gehazi, the servants of Elisha? He had also opportunity to work together in the plan of redemption, right? 
Could he say that also everything we know that all things work together for good? Could he say that? No, it didn't work together good because he became a, the leprosy from man and transferred to him. Why? What was the reason? We know that, right? In that chapter. Now, all become one for one purpose. We know the Naaman, we know his wife, we know he, the maid, and also the king of Syria, and the king's servants, and Naaman and his company, but not this one. Not this one. And yes, the man of God, but not this one. Not this one. So work together, all things work together for good. We all have opportunity to be one of these in the work of work out our own salvation. Again, what is work out our work out our own salvation? The best way to save yourself in cold climate is what? Help, help others who are dying because of cold. Coldness. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13, the, the world, because they, the iniquity abound. So what will be the condition of the world? Yes, colder and colder. We'll be frozen. Now in this situation, how can I save myself? The best way, best way to save Save myself is saving those who are dying. You know, in Matthew chapter 24, when Jesus mentioned the what will happen in this world, he said in verse 14, Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken, and the other. And 41, two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, and the other left. What do we mean by that? They're, it seems they are working together, are they? Are they not? They are working together, but why one is taken, one is left? What do we mean by that? You know? It reminds us, October 22nd, 1844. By the way, Ethan, what's the date for today? October 23rd. We have so many Ethan. October 21st, 2023. Right. Thank you. How many years? Back 179. Do you know what year will that be? 2023 minus 100. Okay. 179 before. Which year will that be? About this time. The leaves of the tree <coughs> were changing, no longer green. Yeah, the leaves of the tree was changing because this time. Two shall be working together in the field, but one shall be taken, the other left. Two women will work together, one will be taken, one left. It reminds us the hour of his judgment. It reminds us that our visible activity is essential, but the spirit and motive of our activity are indispensable. Now, how can how can we be successful, that work together for good. You know, these people, 
they were working together. You know, Naaman and the little maid. It all started from where? From little maid, right? <laughs> but where is where is that that uh, spirit? That considerate spirit, that kindness, the loving for soul came from. From the mind of mind of Jesus. The mind of Jesus in the little girl begins <coughs> that work. The Bible says, let this mind be in you. Which was where? In Christ Jesus. Saving other souls. This is the mind of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. But how can we have now? How can we have this mind of Jesus? Now this is the most important, right? How can we have this mind of Jesus? How can we have this mind of Jesus? How could the Naaman could see the miracle in his own life? How could that he see the leprosy turn went away? When we submit ourselves, then the mind becomes whose mind? With one, with his mind. This is the meaning of how to have the mind of Jesus. How? According to spirit prophecy. By how? By submitting. Was it easy for Naaman to submit? There, there he needed help. Right? Who helped him? The servant. Not only one. If only one by one, you know, one by one, he wouldn't listen to him. But multiple servants convincing him, give reason made him think logical conclusion they presented to him convinced this Naaman to go away to Jordan right and again not only one time from the beginning the servants of God said seven times what we mean by that as we read in Scripture prophecy, with some when we submit ourselves to Christ, the heart is united and the mind becomes one with who? With His mind. This is what it means to be clothed with the garments of righteousness. Yes, this is why. The message of Christ our righteousness is essential for us to see miracle in our personal life. To be free, to be healed from leprosy of sin, we need this remedy, the righteousness of Christ. When we are clothed with these garments, we are, we can truly say, all things work what? Work together for? For good. If there was a time when men and women should have an assurance that they are co-partner with Christ in the saving of the world, when? It is now. Are you willing cooperate with God in the saving of your souls. Amen. I repeat. Every single person here, are you willing to cooperate with God in saving of your own soul? Amen. Amen. Are you willing to cooperate with Jesus in, this work, in the work of saving your own soul.
with God's people? Are you willing to cooperate with God's people, God's church, for the saving of souls? Then do it now. It may be giving people little trick. It may be inviting people to come for Bible study. It may be bring food so that everybody can eat together. Or even buy the water and give to them those who are serving God. Or cleaning, or even music, violins, pianos, whatever. If you can do, do it when? Now. Do it now. God is calling us to do work with Him. That means for my own sake. May God bless us that we may understand the seriousness of our time and age. And we may be able to do serving God in the work of saving my own souls. Let us close our meeting with hymn number